our next section in chapter six basically just expands on um, <clears throat> these mole to mole factors or stoichiometry. Okay, we're going to combine our concept of molar mass with our concept of stoichiometry. Okay, so we're going to look now at mass calculations for our reactions. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll work with an example here. Work with a single replacement reaction. We'll talk more about those later in the quarter. Um, but we are looking at basically Fe2O3 plus carbon forming iron and this is our carbon monoxide or CO. So let's look at an example. Again using this balanced chemical equation we want to know if how many grams of carbon are required to react with 2.5 moles of Fe2O3. So we have our iron three oxide, okay, that's just a little bit of review from chapter five, okay, Fe2O3, right, that is iron three oxide, okay, remember that three tells us our charge, we basically have Fe3 plus and O2 minus, that's how that was formed. Okay, so we have iron three oxide with carbon to form iron and carbon monoxide. All right, <clears throat> so we have been given 2.50 moles of Fe2O3 and we need however many grams of carbon we need to react there. Okay. So remember I said <clears throat> in the last video that anytime that we're changing from one compound to another, we have to involve stoichiometry. Okay. So at some point we're going to have to go from moles of Fe2O3 to moles of carbon. Okay. That's our only way to convert between one compound and another. So since we've been given moles of Fe2O3, okay, that's probably where we're going to want to start. So we're going to want to start at the 2.50 moles of Fe2O3 and convert to moles of carbon. And we're going to do that conversion by basically our stoichiometry. Okay or your mole to mole factor, or basically using your coefficients. Okay, I'm all saying the same thing. And then we're looking for grams of carbon. Okay, remember I said we were going to combine our stoichiometry and our molar mass. So our last step is going to be to go from moles of carbon to grams of carbon. Okay, and again, that conversion factor that we're going to use is our molar mass. So 
And we're going to start with our 2.50 moles of Fe2O3. Set up our conversion factor. We want to convert from moles of Fe2O3 to moles of carbon. We started with moles of Fe2O3 up top, so we need to put that down in our denominator so our units cancel. And then we put moles of carbon up top. And this is our stoichiometry, so we're going to use our coefficients. Okay. So our coefficient in front of carbon is a 3. Okay. We don't want to use this 3 because that's carbon monoxide. We're dealing with just carbon. And our coefficient in front of Fe2O3 is just 1. And then our final step, we want to convert from moles of carbon to grams of carbon. And that's using our molar mass. Okay, and we're going to get the molar mass from our periodic table. <clears throat> Remember, we look that up. We have carbon here as 12.01, that number down below. And that 12.01 corresponds to the grams. And molar mass, remember, is always per one mole. So we always want to have our one down with the moles. So unit-wise, our moles of Fe2O3 cancel. Our units of moles of carbon cancel. And we're left with our grams of ca carbon. So we can plug this into our calculator. We have 2.5 times 3 times 12.01. We get 90.075. Okay. Three sig figs from our starting number. So we have 90.1 grams of carbon. So again, in case you got lost, let's go ahead and write where these numbers came from. Okay, the 3 for the moles of carbon came from our coefficient in front of the carbon. And our 1 from Fe2O3 came from the coefficient in front of the Fe2O3. Let's work through another example. Okay, still using this balanced chemical equation here. So how many grams of Fe are produced when 36 grams of carbon reacts? Okay. So <clears throat> basically we've been given our 36.0 grams of carbon and we need our grams of Fe. So we know we're going to have to use stoichiometry because we're starting with one compound and we're ending with another. So kind of our outline that we're looking at is we're going to start with our 36.0 grams of carbon. Our goal is to get to moles of carbon so we can use stoichiometry. And to get from grams to moles of carbon, we use our molar mass from our periodic table. Then we can use stoichiometry. And the only way to convert from one compound to another, moles of carbon to moles of iron. 
So that's our stoichiometry. Or basically you're looking at your coefficients. Your multiple factors. And then our final step, we want grams of iron. So we can convert to grams of iron, again, using molar mass. Okay, looking at the periodic table. Go ahead and try that out. I've mapped out the calculation for you. Go ahead and pause the video. Try it on your own. Look at your balanced chemical equation for your coefficients. Look at your periodic table for your molar masses, and I'll have the solution when you come back. All right, so we're going to start with our 36.0 grams of carbon. We want to convert from grams of carbon to moles of carbon. We have grams of carbon up top, so we put grams of carbon down in the bottom, so our units cancel. Then to moles of carbon, and we get that number from the periodic table. Remember, so we have 12.01 grams of carbon, and molar mass is always, always per one mole. And then we want to convert from moles of carbon to moles of iron. Moles of carbon is in the top, so we put moles of carbon in the bottom. Moles of iron up top. And we're going to use our coefficients. So our coefficient in front of iron for our balanced chemical equation is a 2. <clears throat> so we put a 2 there. And our moles of carbon, we get our coefficient of 3. And then our last conversion, we're going from moles of iron to grams of iron. We had moles of iron up top, so we want to go moles of iron down in the bottom. And our goal is to get to grams of iron, so that goes up top. We look at our periodic table for the molar mass of iron. Okay, iron's here roughly in the center of our periodic table as an atomic number of 26. And okay, we have 55.85 for our molar mass. So that is 55.85 grams per how many moles? One mole. Remember, molar mass is always per one mole. It doesn't matter. has nothing to do with the stoichiometry. has nothing to do with that, that coefficient. Molar mass is always per one mole. Okay, The only place that your coefficients come into play is when you're converting from moles of one thing to moles of another. So plug these values into our calculator. We have 36. Okay, divided by 12.01 times 2, divided by 3, times 55.85, and I get 111.6069942. We have three sig figs in our first value, so we need three sig figs. So I have 112. Okay, the three ones are significant. The six to the next step or to the right of it rounds that one up. So final answer would be 112 grams of iron. Okay.